Welcome to the world of Cisco Wireless Networking. My name is Vinay and I'm from Cisco Support Team. In this video, we will see how to perform initial configuration on a Cisco Wireless LAN controller using GUI and CLI. In this video, we have taken the example of 4400 series controller. But if you are using 5500 series controller, then you can either use RJ45 console port or USB console port to configure your controller. Connect one end of your null modem serial cable to the controller console port and the other end to your PC serial port. Now the first port on the controller is known as service port which is used for GUI configuration and the second one is serial console port. Now the blue cable is connected to the service port and this DB9 connector is connected to the console port on this 4400 series wireless LAN controller. We need to use the terminal emulation program with this configuration in order to connect to the console port. In order to use GUI wizard, please make sure that the PC connected to the service port is configured in the same subnet as the controller, for example, 192.168.1.4, because the GUI IP address will be 192.168.1.1. To configure the controller using the GUI configuration wizard, we need to follow the steps. Connect your PC to the service port and configure it to use the same subnet as the controller. In this example, I'm giving 192.168.1.4 because by default, the IP address of the controller GUI is 192.168.1.1. Since this is a factory default controller, we need to give the system name. I'm going to use Cisco Support Community. Then we have to assign a username as the administrator and password to this account. Click Next. Now we need to select the SNMP version 1, 2 or 3. So either you can enable or disable any one of them. Click Next. Now this is the information for the service port through which we are configuring this controller. This is the MAC address of the service port. Now we need to check whether we would like to use the DHCP IP address or we would like to assign the service port IP address. Now we can enable the link aggregation mode. Either we can enable or disable this option. Now for the management interface configuration, this is the MAC IP address. The VLAN identifier is used as zero. The IP address that we need to assign for the management interface configuration. In this example, I'm using this virtual IP address. The port number will be the port with which we are connected right now to the physical information for the management. So right now I'm connected to port one for the management. So I used port one. If we have a DHCP server, we can configure that as well. Now this will be the RF mobility domain name. I'll leave it at default and the country selected right now is the United States. Now make sure that the country has a regularity domain pre-configured. Click Next. Now this warning will pop up if you select the country with a different regularity domain configurations. Click OK. This will be the AP Manager interface configuration. 
we can configure the VLAN identifier, the IP address, net mask, and the gateway for the same. We can leave the port number and the active port as default and as well. So the IP address for the AP Manager interface configuration, I'm using the same virtual IP address again. Now this will be the virtual interface configuration. So we can leave the IP address as 1.1.1.1 because this will be a virtual IP address. Now for WLAN configuration, we have a WLAN ID as one. We need to give the profile name for this WLAN. Let's give it a CSC and the WLAN SSID will be, let's make it a wireless community. Now, by default, the security used is WPA2 AES and authentication will be 802.1x. So click OK. Now, if we have any radius server configuration, then we can add the information here. The server IP address. It will be the shared key format will be ASCII or HEX the shared key used between the controller and the radius server to exchange the radius packets. By default, the port number for the authentication of the radius packet will be 1812. And the status of the server, we can either enable or disable. This will be the 802.11 configuration for A, B, and G. So we make sure that we check all the boxes to make them enable. Now we need to set the time of the controller as well. So the current time, date, and the time zone. Delta will be used if we have, so if we have configured the DST, we are going to use the Delta information. I'll keep it as default. So the configuration wizard is completed. Once we click on save and reboot the system, it will take effect and save all the configuration. Now let's see how to configure the controller using CLI. When we turn on the controller for the first time, it goes through self-test and check all the services installed on the con controller. Now it will ask whether you'd like to use auto install. Click yes. In case if you have a configuration file on the TFTP, you can select the option no. Now it will ask for the administrator username, which you'd like to give. So I'm using admin. Enter the password. Confirm the password and give the service interface IP address. I'm using DHCP. Enable the lag, the management interface IP address. I'm going to use the same. The interface net mask. The default gateway.
the VLAN identifier. I'm using default and ask for the management interface port. Since I'm connected to port number one, I'm using one. The DSCP I server IP address, if we have any. The AP manager interface IP address will be the same, which we used in case of GUI. If we have any DHCP, we can define here. The virtual gateway IP address, since it is a virtual IP address, you can select either 1111 or 2222. The RF group name, I'm using it as RF. It asks for the SSID as well for the same group. I'm using RF again. It asks whether you would like to use a static IP address. And for the time sake, I'm using a radius server configuration as no, but if you have any, you can select that. The country code by default is US. Then it asks whether I would like to enable the A, B, and G A2.2.1.11. So I select yes for auto RF as well. Now, if you have a configuration for NTP server, we can define the IP address here and how frequently we would like to poll it. So I'm selecting 3600. Now, if you want to select the configuration, select yes, it will reboot and save the config. For more information, you can also refer Cisco Wireless LAN controller configuration guide. Hope you find this video helpful. Let us know what all topics you would like to see in future videos.